meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. First, we have to approve the agenda. Take it everyone's had a look by now, so. That's so moved with the addition of a conversation on the natural resources section, if we have to actually add that. Okay, I don't, we don't have to formally add that because that's just going to be an informal discussion at the end if we have time. Um, okay. Thanks for the proactivity. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion from Stephanie and a second by Marcella. Those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Okay. Agenda approved. Uh, the first thing on the agenda after that is uh, comments from the chair. I uh, actually don't, I don't have anything. I think uh, for me, I'm a little rusty getting back in because we had an extra week off. Uh, but you know, nothing's happened. It seems like things are moving along with the, uh, city, uh, plan here. Um, so this seems all good. Uh, so I've got, I've got nothing that I haven't said recently before. Does anyone else have anything to bring to the group? Okay. Well, next on the agenda is general business. Uh, don't believe we have anyone from the public here. Actually, can I, quick, can I get a quick question for Mike real quick before we start? Now that we've lifted the statewide restrictions with the 80% goal reached, is there any discussion um, within City Hall to open it back up to have us do in-person meetings? Uh, so with the end of the um, the emergency order, a number of our uh, shortcuts for the open meeting law come to an end as well. So we now have to be incorporating um, the public into our meetings as we go forward. Now, City Hall is going to be closed till July 6th. So I think the way um, we may end up with one more meeting that will be virtual like this one, um, where again, if somebody is interested and we can make special arrangements to have them come in for public meet for public input. But the expectation is that when we start doing the July meetings, we will be able to do a hybrid. And the way that's going to work is I'm not going to be sitting here in my office. I'll be sitting up in the council chambers and there's going to be two, um, stations set up one for the host um, myself and one for the public. So the public could show up. It'll be broadcast on the screen in the council chambers. And if somebody has public comment, they could come up to the, to that computer and give input at that computer, kind of in the same way that we used to do, except it was a microphone. We would all sit at the table, public would sit in the chairs. If they have a comment, they could go to the microphone. So that way it gets recorded um, on the ORCA in the new way, because you guys wanted to stay in the remote the way we're going now, um, we'll just have to have me up in the council chamber so we have um, a public access. And uh, City Hall will be open from 530 to 730 during those meetings so that way anyone can come in and provide input. Or they can go online as they can right now and, and join the meeting. So. Uh, we think that'll maximize the amount of public input that's available um, and it won't be a big imposition. It just means I don't sit in my office in my own chair. I have to go sit upstairs. You know, after all of this is done, Mike, if you brought your chair up there, nobody would say anything. <laughs> it's like the smallest, and you know, just it's a new world. Uh, yeah, so, so thanks for bringing that up, guys. Uh, so, so that we're all familiar, is there anyone that's not vaccinated at this point out of the Planning Commission? Yeah. Can you ask that question? Um, I guess people could say, you know, I have the right to say no. It's my, it's my health privacy rights. But no one did that, so seems like we're vaccinated. Well, nobody answered you either, but. <laughs> uh, 
But I am vaccinated, just so you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. I am vaccinated too. So. Uh, yeah. So city, city Hall is still closed. And the reason why City Hall is, has remained closed is to give, um, it was set up in advance uh, that the timing of July 6th had been set up um, a few weeks ago uh, in order to give everybody the opportunity who is a staff member who works in City Hall to get vaccinated before the City Hall is reopened to the public. And that's why um, it is set up the way it is because a number of the younger staff didn't get the opportunity to start vaccinations till late. So in order for them to get both vaccines and the two week window before um, it was July 6th, that was the date that would work out. So if people are wondering why we're not reopening right now, that's that's the reason why is because not all the staff have gotten through their two week um, window after their second shot. Okay, I, I think that we'll probably revisit the idea um, of, of everyone mostly returning physically probably near the end of the summer. Uh, I'm going to be out the first meeting in August, by the way. Uh, so uh, maybe after that, we could talk about coming back in. I don't know. What do people think? Okay. Sure. You you said you're going to be out the first week of August. Yeah, the first meeting in August. Yeah. Yeah, I think I will be too if it's that first week. And I'm I'm going to be out the August twenty third. Okay. So if that was our first in person, I would miss it, but um, I'll catch the next one. Yeah, and when you guys go back to in person, it's up to you guys. There are, there are a number of committees that enjoy the the Zoom format and want to keep going. So it really is up to you. If you want to keep going in the Zoom format, you're welcome to. The only change is with my, um, where I'm going to be sitting. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, so yeah, I know we're not in a rush, but we'll have to, we'll have to eventually deal with that. Okay. So next, we need to uh, consider the minutes from May 24th. Everyone can take a look. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Or do we have any edits first or anything to discuss about it? I'll move to approve the minutes. Okay, motion by Marcella, do we have a second? I wasn't there, so someone else second. <laughs> second. Okay, we have a second from Aaron. Those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Okay. Minutes approved. Uh, and that brings us to the energy chapter. And I believe that Marcella done some work on it. Um, it's up to, I'll leave it up to Mike and Marcella if he wants to walk through the chapter and be that. So I'm the comments that I made, I did like suggesting in the Google Doc and it was in the doc, the document that's titled dash bar comments, BC comments. So I left Barb's comments in there, added a few of my own and there was some stuff that Barb wanted to add that was a little bit specific, like that I wouldn't be able to do without diving into research, which if need be, I can do, but 
I didn't, not for this. And then um, I also, there's one other part I kind of left as is, and that was the <clears throat> longer discussion about aspirations and goals and outline of implementation approaches. And that was just because I thought we'd go back and check that out a little bit more closely after we were finished like voting and being okay with those. So I kind of left that as it was, but tried to do a little bit of tweaking in the talk. And it was mostly just sort of nitty, nitpicky kind of little things. So, um, yeah. I'm sorry, Marcel. I, I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right document. Which, which exactly is, is the in in the energy plan folder? There's three word docs, and I was in the one that's energy plan chapter dash bc comments dot docx. <clears throat> Do you see that one? Because yeah, Barb had originally put comments in that one, I just thought we'd keep them together. You guys want me to pull that one up and share it? It looks like we're all in it. I can see us all. Okay. <laughs> I just put a link in the chat to it as well. Uh, so, how would people prefer to do this? Should we should we have someone go through it out loud, or is everyone okay to just sit quietly and and read it for a bit? I think it, it might be more orderly to just to read it out loud so that we can address things as we go. Come to think of it. So let's just let's just do that. Do we have someone willing to read through it? If not, I will. Okay. If you really don't want to, I can. <laughs> no, I can, I can do it. I can <clears throat> do it. Uh, okay, we ready. <laughs> I have a lot of practice reading bedtime stories and things like that, so, you know, but I'm not, I'm not going to do it in that tone. I was going to say, can you do the voices? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to ask. I'm going to stop and ask you guys, you know, questions and things. Oh, anyway. All right. Okay. Energy plan chapter, first draft, introduction. Some of the boldest aspirations in the city plan are found in this energy chapter. The global consequences of burning fossil fuels are well documented and addressing the changes of the challenges of climate change will be a generational effort. At a local scale, is that a barb inclusion where it just says example? Marcella? Sorry, the green example was what I put in because barb, barb is the red. So she said, she wanted or her suggestion was um how about specific montpelier issues here and she gave a couple of examples so i wasn't gonna i don't feel like i should decide on what the example is but if barb had an example she wanted to do i thought one way to one way to frame it would be at a local scale montpelier example and then at a global scale there's this other stuff so it kind of puts it in perspective it's just a way to frame it so we would need to land on an an example, I guess. Okay. Can we just generally say ways in which Montpelier is affected? Um, like for instance, at a, at a local scale, Mont Montpelier is affected by climate change. Mont yeah, roof, like flooding. And Looks like Mike's typing, which is great. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was, I was, if I, if you guys want me to try to throw something in, um, at local scale, I, I would just suggest not directly referencing the 1993 flood. Um, it just feels like a little attenuated at 28 years old. So yeah, yeah. not that it's not significant, but we could say increased flooding risk. And that's what, yeah. It also opens the door to the questions about to what degree was that climate change and what degree was other things and just um, yeah, keep going, Mike. Or and yeah, keep going. flooding. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not as good just doing these on the fly here and resulting <laughs> flooding that could occur. I don't know. Sure. I mean, we could we could mention erosion, um, weather fluctuations. And might as well throw in oop. Man, we'll just go rain falling. I don't know what how, what other things we would expect. I mean it's gonna be warmer and hotter during the <laughs> summer, but Right. Well, I think it's it's increased rainfall, um, increased precipitation, causing additional flooding or erosion issues. It's the potential for more severe droughts um, in the summers and potentially impacting water supplies. Probably less of an issue for Montpelier um, than other communities in the state. It's also increased freeze thaw cycle challenges in the winter that cause the lovely potholes that we all love and enjoy. And, and makes that worse. So I think there's a lot of other related pieces. Yeah. Do we know that the climate models are going to show increased rainfall like, definitively? I always think of it as like there's a kind of a known, a recognized, a recognition that there's going to be more extreme weather events, but I don't know about overall precipitation trends. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was extreme weather events too. Yeah, I, I I would suggest I think we might be on safer footing if we were to say experience more, uh, yeah, like more severe uh, weather events resulting in, you know, potentially resulting in significant flooding or something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I, I think it's both, but that's fine. <laughs> but that, that's fine if if I don't know enough about it to know what the model show, so. If, if there's increased rainfall in those models, then great. You can leave it. I think it's a good point, though. The, the increased rainfall is one thing. Increased rainfall in 24 hours All at the same because time. of a big storm is a whole other thing. Uh, yeah, if somebody wants to jump in and throw something in there. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the thing I I have heard definitively is that over time we'll probably end up with more snow in the winters. Um, doesn't mean it's going to stick around more, but it'll snow more mostly because we pick up a lot of our moisture from the Great Lakes. So when it's cold, the Great Lakes freeze over, and we that's why we get more of our snow in the more of them in the shoulder seasons, but. They're expecting us to have more snow because of the fact that the Great Lakes won't freeze, so we're going to end up getting more snow during the winter. Although it'll keep getting warm and then melting off. Um, I'm just tumbling on on how to do this freeze thaw thing. Um, As long as we don't have more than one person typing, we'll be okay. <laughs> I don't know. What somebody offer suggestions to change that or something. I'll just take mine back out there. Okay, hyphen, uh, cycles, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, that's looks good to me right there for a general accurate statement. Is everybody good with that? Okay, I'm going to move on. 
At a global scale, sea level rise, the potential for mass extinctions, more frequent and destructive storms, harsher droughts, and more flooding are all possible within our lifetimes and those of our children. Acknowledging these realities, the City Council has adopted policies to both adapt Montpelier to these changes as well as minimize and hopefully eliminate our contributions to future climate change. Montpelier can do our part to make a better future for generations to come. Um, I think that's another barb. No, the green was me. Oh, I did not you... think. Oh, are you talking about the red? Uh, I was seeing this the parent in the parentheses there. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if everybody else, my document had like two different shades of red. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. mine Oh, sorry. <laughs> so sorry, pink and sorry. red. It's green on mine. Okay, I must be the pink then. The, my stuff must be the pink. So I just I, I just did a little wordsmithing there. Montpelier will do its part to make a better future for generations to come. Still don't really love that, though. It doesn't feel necessary. We can just dump it, yeah. Yeah, because of the prior sentence, it feels like we're, we're repeating ourselves. Strike it. Let's do that. Stop it. I think that this chapter is overall longer than I would want it to be. So, I need It is. Yeah, it does have a lot more words than it needs to be. Yeah. Which also makes me question whether we need to add something on sustainability. Yeah, I, I don't think we necessarily do. Does anyone else? I mean, what's... I guess I would want to know what specifically she means if like what's the what's the different point about sustainability because if we're talking later about energy policies that's more specific than general sustainability does she mean like um if if we can if climate change keeps going and we keep having these more severe storms it's going to be less possible to live in Montpelier due to those things is that sort of what she's getting at Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't really know. That's speculative. Can I make a suggestion? So I think we're getting bogged down um, largely because we're not clear about what the function of the introduction is. Is um, Should we move to some more substantive sections, get through those first, and then we'll have a better sense of what we should plug into the intro? Um, yeah. Like, the, I mean, let's just move along. Um, so let's forget the sustainability thing and, and move along. Is that, is that all right? Um, I, I mean, I think in general, a brief intro is fine. We don't need to dwell on this. <clears throat> the Montpelier Energy Advisory uh, Committee was founded in 2010. Okay, so, uh, previously, this discussion of city committees, uh, they were in other chapters. Is this, is this something we decided to keep in? I'm having trouble recalling. What do you mean other chapters, like a different part in the plan? A whole different part? Yeah, the, the other, the other. I guess historic preservation was the, was the last one, right? Uh, when we went through that, there was, we had a discussion about what to do about these other committees and whether we want that up front or somewhere else. The Historic Preservation Commission was mentioned in the introduction of the... Okay. We didn't okay so as long as it's consistent um i'll take i'll take your word mike uh so the montpelier energy advisory uh, committee was founded in 2010 to act in an advisory capacity to the montpelier city council on energy issues specifically it was charged with identifying and nurturing potential energy saving projects and opportunities informing and engaging city residents on energy issues with a special focus on building weatherization and partnering with other statewide groups such as EAN and VRNC, VNRC to foster long-term far-reaching project goals develop and developments that will ultimately serve to either reduce Montpelier's energy use or actively meet its energy needs from renewables. That is a long sentence and I'm definitely adding an Oxford comma. Um, but uh, are, are we good with that? I don't see a big need to 
wordsmith too much there. February 2014, MEAC recommended the City Council adopted a citywide goal of net zero Montpelier. In short, this means that the city is committed to becoming the first state capital to produce or offset all of its energy needs, electric, thermal, and transportation from renewable energy sources, and it has set the target date to meet this goal at 2030. This was further expanded and clarified in October 2018 with the adopted City Council goal that Montpelier will become the first 100% renewable energy capital city and eliminate all fossil fuel use with the following deadlines. By 2030, 100% of energy used for municipal government operations, thermal, electrical, and transportation will be renewable or offset. By 2050, fossil fuel use by uh, will be eliminated entirely, and 100% of energy needs from the sport, residential, and commercial will be met renewably. The plan is separated into municipal and citywide energy use with different target dates as shown above. Some very significant projects have already been completed in these first years, including, I'm gonna put a comma in, including partnering with the state of Vermont to expand the capital complex district heat plant. This project created a utility to provide heat from the sustainable biomass plant to private municipal buildings. Next, the city participated in two group net metering solar projects to replace 70% of the municipal government's uh electrical usage um do we, do we want it looks like uh, it looks like a barb change and she wanted to yeah. mention schools there municipal government and school electrical usage i mean the schools are part of the municipal government but i mean do we want to call them out or not i think is the question is it gov municipal buildings and schools or where does it go well it's some some city buildings and some schools is um i think how it's laid out i don't remember actually it's because this is the electrical this is um it's net metered for 70% of the electrical use. So it's mostly the buildings. Um, I would just say to replace 70% of 70% of municipal electrical usage. Use. I'd, say, I'd say building electrical use. Building electrical use. Okay. Say good. Oh, use instead of usage. Okay. That's weird. A weird well, word. Uh, one of one of the arrays is located in the city. I think we should delete that sentence. <laughs> or put in photos of them with little captions about where they are because people will be like, why is it in Sharon? Yeah, it's like so the... me. <laughs> why is it Sharon? I, I'm struggling with this section a little bit because it is a website and I think Marcel's comment is spot on on the side here that it should be bullets or photos with um, with captions explaining what's going on because it's this definitely doesn't, this is not reading like a website. Okay. Uh, so the more uh, visual we can make it, the more we can break things out, the better, and the more it's going to make sense. Yeah, and that's that's fine if you want to take that out. That was, like I said, that's part of my stuff I had recommended. So. Should we mark it like that? Yeah, that would be fine. Um, do we want to do the same thing with the heat plant? Yeah, yeah you I'm could do like heat plant and then caption that says this heat plant provides uh, sustainable, whatever, municipal building, 70%. Oh, no, and then you two solar arrays, because everybody loves a good picture of a solar array. 
<laughs> and then put it down. This is this together. These two solar arrays replace seventy percent, and then make Don't it. It'll it. break up the space. Don't forget a picture of a car charger. Oh my god! Yeah. Ask that. It's a big deal. Yeah, I'm sure once we get to building the website, we'll be going through and making additional edits. Um, I think a lot of a lot of this is to make sure that we're all kind of agreeing on what we want to say and trimming it down. I think there's probably something to be said for having because these are very con like concrete, obvious, physical things that people can look at around this, well, sort of around the city, having to do with energy chapter. So I think there could be some benefit to putting these things in here. But I think with photos and locations, it would be nicer. Yeah, when I wrote it, I knew it was too long, but I felt it was easier to leave it a little bit long rather than go through and take stuff out. It would be easier to leave it a little long and kind of find out what we think is the most important to keep in and trim back the rest. Okay. Um so I'm, I'm breaking up these different projects by paragraph um, to kind of go with the idea of making it kind of bite-sized pieces like bullets and having the photos with them. Uh, okay, so the next it says, there have also been significant conservation improvements at the water plant and water resource recovery facility, as well as an innovative organics to energy system added to the WRRF, which will heat and power the facility. And if a proposed phase two is completed, produce power for sale to the grid from the purchasing of high concentration organic waste. Photo of that thing. What is otherwise known as the sewer plant? Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. Um, uh, so the, the next uh, paragraph says, as stated above, the plan is bold and far reaching. Um, do we need to proclaim that? Uh, and we'll take many big and small steps in order for us to become a model for other communities around Vermont and the country. I don't think we need to qualify the plan. <laughs> Well, it's more just that it's as stated above. We don't need to say it twice. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something. You can tell me. Oh, I had a general question, Mike, about the use of the word plan versus the word chapter, um, like the energy plan, natural resources plan, are those individual plans to go into the larger plan or are they parts of the one plan? Because I was changing it and then I was like, oh, maybe I misunderstood because I kept saying it. It's it's all semantics, but yeah, I tend to flip back and forth from the you know, an energy plan or an energy chapter. And sometimes they'll talk about the housing element because that's how it's described in the statute. So sometimes, uh, we end up, and we can, we could agree to format it in some way and say, when we say plan, we mean the city plan and otherwise use the word chapter. And we can just go through and do kind of search for places, make sure that we refer to an energy chapter as opposed to the energy plan. It's up to you guys. I think I would require that, or um, I prefer that, that, that when, when talking about a specific chapter, we use the word chapter, and when we're talking about the entire city plan, ref refer to that as the plan. Do you have other thoughts? Okay. Uh, so I just, I, I uh, cut, cut down the sentence a little bit and just changed it to and in, 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 in this case, Mike, I mean, this is the plan here. Is that because, I mean, I, I read it as referencing more than just the energy chapter, that there's other moving parts here. 
But are we are we specifically talking about the energy chapter when we say the plan will require many steps in order for us to become a model? I was when I was writing it. My intent was it, it was referring to the energy plan, but okay. Well, there I just avoided that problem. It will require many steps in order for us to become a model for other communities around Vermont and the country. Do we want to mention behavioral change being required? Planning Commission. I don't have anything intelligent to add to it, but if Barb had an idea of something to say, but I don't um, have like a point. Yeah, I'm thinking about if we, what would it take to have everyone in Montpelier have an electric vehicle? So assuming we could get a renewable source of energy for everyone's house in Montpelier, what does it take for everyone to have a, an electric vehicle? Does it take upgrades to, to their electrical system for these really old houses so that they have enough power to actually plug their car in at their house? Uh, like there's a lot that goes into that and I, by 2050 feels like a really strong target. <laughs> really yeah, I, think all you, I, think target. I think all you need is 220 lines to go in. Every home gets that anyway. I don't think there's a ton of infrastructure okay. to do. So maybe you don't need electrical upgrades, but. I mean, I mean, you would definitely need some, but I think for the most part, the infrastructure is already in place. I, I think what Barb is referring to, and I'm just trying to speak a little bit for her, is I think she she is thinking more in the camp of it's not just going to be technology changes. It's not a matter of weatherize, just weatherizing everybody's houses and getting everybody to drive electric vehicles. I think she's referring to behavioral changes like um, not driving anymore and you know, you, you have to live your life differently. Um, not sure I necessarily agree with that, but I think that's where she was trying to go is that you're gonna have to change your behaviors. Um, we're not gonna be able to eat tons of meat anymore because, you know, it's just, you know, it's not sustainable for everybody to be eating a ton of meat. So we have to make behavioral changes in addition to these technical changes. Um, I feel like I, I agree with you. That's probably what she means. And I, it's not that those, that's not true. I just don't know that like we can't force Montpelierites to do that. So if we want to talk about behavioral changes, we could talk about the way that the structural changes that are going to happen, that we are planning for will support and enable people to make the behavioral changes that they want to make to be more sustainable to minimize their own footprint, et cetera. That they can live here feeling like they're supported in changing behaviors in support of climate. Uh, so I just think, I mean, I just, I just wrote this as a way to note it without really going trying to go too far like Marcel's talking about here so changes will include technology upgrades and behavioral adaptations is that moderate enough or is that does that statement cause any concern for anyone I almost feel like this comes in later when we talk about aspirations and goals we can say you know net zero types of goals can't happen without behavioral changes, but people might argue that behavioral changes can't happen without the infrastructure to support them. So we could talk about it in the, that section of like, how did we, how did we get to these aspirations? It's because of this structure we're trying to, build up to support. I just don't want to be too repetitive, you know? Yeah, I mean, from what you're saying, it's like we should move this entire paragraph down. Is that 
That's kind of what I'm thinking. Because... Because the rest of the intro is just talking about, like, okay, global... Global, like, point. Why do we even have this chapter? Then it goes into a little bit of history. Then it talks about sort of some specific stuff that we've done to date. And then we start talking about like a kind of a more aspiration y stuff. So I feel like that could that could go. It looks like so, so this is mostly like Mike's first draft. It looks like Mike, you were thinking you you, you lay this out as past, then present, then future. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, a little bit of that. That's it was meant to kind of wrap up the introduction. So if all somebody read was the introduction, they would kind of get a, a bite of what what we're doing. Um, without getting into too much of the nitty gritty of what we're doing. True. I just didn't want to leave the introduction kind of hanging with the end of the, the list of things that we'd done. I kind of wanted to kind of bring it full circle a little bit with a closing paragraph. We could say like in the aspirations outlined below or outlined in the next page or something will support. Yeah, it just seems to me, I, I kind of, I, I feel like we, we were always just begging for trouble when you start talking about how behavioral changes are necessary and how we it just kind of becomes this you know very what do you call it Mike puppy dogs and unicorns but <laughs> Rain rainbows and unicorns rainbows and unicorns yeah and I just feel like I mean I think Marcel I'm sorry to I, I think this might be what you're saying is but I feel like we can just sort of talk about how the efforts that are contained in the chapter itself will help facilitate the kinds of changes that are necessary to help, you know, ensure a, 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 a better future, you know, energy wise, climate wise, you know, and, and we think that these things will help achieve, you know, broader goals beyond, you know, just sort of the local impacts or something like that, but to sort of delve into these like more, existential <laughs> questions about who we have to be <laughs> in order to solve climate change, I think is just probably not necessary here. So I, I mean, I can give us, I can try to take a stab at that language. I'm not going to be able to do it this very second, but if people are interested in maybe that approach, I can do that offline. Yeah. I think you're, I think I'm on board with what you're, what you're saying. Cause we can only control the sort of structural support for our individual choices. So Aaron, you're proposing to just to rewrite this paragraph. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, let me just draft an alternative and we can sort of weigh the two. Um, but I, I'm just not going to be able to do it right now while everybody's talking. I just have to think about it for a second and sort of go through the plan. But I, I'll, I'll give it a stab and circulate it to the group. Um, well, I guess I can't do that. But um, well, we were, I think we were planning on voting tonight. All right. Um, um, yeah. We might just also consider just keep the first sentence and the last sentence and chop out the middle, which would be another way of just buttoning up. That will require many steps in order for us to become a model for other communities around Vermont in the United States. We cannot fix global warming and climate change by ourselves, but we can think globally and act locally and do our part to ensure the planet we leave will be one that is sustainable. I'm I'm honestly fine with any change we want to make here. I mean, this is this is the intro, so I don't, it's not substantive. So, um, do you do you guys want to shorten it like Mike's saying, or do you want to try to reword it? I'm, I'm working on something now. We'll just keep going, and okay. I'll, I'll bring it back. Okay. Later or two. Uh, so next we have uh, uh, work completed to date. This um, looks like Barb. Uh, uh, 
Uh, so, so Mike, what do you think about this stuff that Barnett included here, and how does that fit in with the way we're structuring other chapters? So this was a little bit surprising um, to me. Uh, in her email, her comment was that we didn't talk in the introduction about all the great things that Montpelier had been doing, and I, I'm honestly just I, I kind of thought we talked about district heat, we talked about municipal solar, we talked about waste to energy. Um, we didn't talk about every single thing that's been done, but at the same time, we are trying to, you know, just kind of hit the, the biggest of our highlights. Um, and, and some of these, I don't know, I guess depends on the stylistically what we want. Do we want to be getting into the, you know, um, exactly what we've done percentage wise for energy improvements to all these pieces. Um, another note I had is that we do have a, a section a couple down that's, you know, the summary of past efforts. So if we did want to have something, you know, this, I don't think this is introduction material, um, but that, that's just my, some of my, my thoughts that I'm not sure this fits here. Might fit better under summary of past efforts. Yeah, I, I agree that it's duplicative to what is already in the intro. I would be fine with it, I guess, in summary of past efforts. Okay, I just moved it down there so we can revisit when we get to that part. I guess that way, if somebody did not read the intro, but they just wanted to look at past efforts in a bullet list, that would get them all of it. Okay. So uh, we'll keep going for now and we'll, we'll get back to that. Uh, how does the energy plan relate to the other chapters? The, the energy plan is closely linked to nearly every other chapter in the city plan. Some chapters amplify the energy plan goals directly. For example, affordability is an important objective of the housing plan and making units more efficient through weatherization helps achieve both our housing and energy goals. Uh, similarly, the utilities and facilities chapter looks to energy efficiency and operations of plants, as well as the district heat utility and thermal efficiency of our buildings to support sustainable budget goals. Uh, I, I think the, the only thing to note there is that we should make sure that once we tinker with these other chapters that it actually still says that. So I, I know in housing, we actually, uh, the housing working group, is we, we're, we're going to plan to actually remove some of the aspirations and goals uh, that are very transportation heavy and just leave it to the transportation chapter, for instance. So there, there might be some tinkering that affects some of this. So anyways, other chapters in this plan require consideration of complementary policies to support the energy plan. For example, the transportation plan prioritizes, prioritizes the ability to live and work in Montpelier without a car, thereby supporting reduced fossil fuel consumption. Supporting this is the land use plan's goals of fostering a dense mixed use downtown with good sidewalks and bike lanes. Further, the transportation plan's support for public transport Trans transit, ride sharing options, and electric vehicle charging stations. And then that seems like Barb asked if that's in the transportation plan. Also work to advance the goals of the energy plan. And yes, electric vehicle charging stations. Well, it's, it's in this, the various plans. I mean, we may, as you say, as we proofread, we may have to go through and make some tweaks because if it gets, if electric vehicle charging stations get pulled out of the transportation plan because they're talked about in the energy plan, we just have to make sure it ends up landing in one of them. And we won't know that till we've gone through and have the final versions of all the plans and kind of go through and proofread them for consistency. Okay. But I think uh, she had she had some doubts or some questions about we've had debates about um a little bit about, you know, what is what is our is our what is our future? Is our future no cars in the downtown or is our future, you know, electric cars? Um because whichever future we choose, it's gonna have different 
strategies for implementing and and the choice that has been laid out is that we are moving towards an electric car future, not towards a nobody has cars, we all use public transit future. All walk, bike, public transit. Um, and that's, that's, that's a choice, that's a, a vision choice, but our choice was um, the one that even MIAC felt was the more viable future or the more li uh, likely future is one that um, we're going to be transitioning to electric vehicles. Although we obviously are hoping for and planning for additional active mobility, more walking, more biking, but that we're going to need vehicle charging stations um, to support the electric vehicles. Okay. I think, I think that's fine. Um, I'm fine with it so far. Everybody I else think good? Marcel is, I think Marcella's changes here are an improvement to what I had. So yeah. Uh, so moving on, another chapter that supports the energy plan. Um, I'm just going to say this chapter. is the National Resources Chapter, which has strategies to develop carbon sequestration management plans for city park land. Um, is, okay, right. is, is that right, the way that that's written, city park land? Uh, we kind of, I mean, I feel like I need, we need to, I just put a note that was like, we're gonna need to finish the Natural Resources Plan first and then. Yeah, I, mean, I was just thinking on like our capitalization conventions throughout the. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have that to make sure that we're there. just following the same conventions. Uh, uh, yeah, we capitalize some, we got to capitalize all. And yeah, I think it should be non capitalized there. Nice work around. Yeah, well, yeah, that's kind of a big part of my day job. <laughs> Using words to work around problems. Uh, so anyways, uh, for Montpelier's uh, park lands, in order to offset some fossil fuel use. Uh, I didn't know what, um, this seems yeah, like I don't know what that is. Um, it seems like, yeah, this, this discussion is about the natural resources chapter, not, not the energy chapter. Yeah. Yeah. You delete that. Natural resources is also a chapter where the impacts of hydropower on water quality and natural aquatic communities could, would be considered. Um, I highlighted that because I honestly don't remember if it's in there. I think it is in there, but it should be is considered if or are considered, yeah. Finally, the Natural Resources Plan addresses urban ecology with goals of more street trees and green space, both of which play important roles in addressing the heat island effect of our downtown and saving energy in the summer. And again, we can trim pieces out if it's just too extraneous in summer. Hey, sorry, I just wanted you guys to know I just added a alternative paragraph to the info at the end. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll do this next one to just finish the section, then we'll go back up. Uh, the historic resources chapter is one area where we find some challenges. I thought about this, the way this is presented, and I didn't end up coming up with anything better. I get the point, trying to say that like some are gonna, some chapters amplify the energy plan goals directly and others require some sort of thoughtful 
work to make work, but I didn't come up with a great way to say that. Okay. <clears throat> And I thought, I thought maybe it is fine just the way it's written. As long as we don't think it reads as in, you know, damn that historic research chapter. If only we could just dump it, it would make everything else easier. You know what I'm saying? But I just want it to read like the challenges are inherent in this process because there's competing interests and many different things that we value and we have to figure out a way to make them come together. Yeah, and the historic chap the historic chapter does talk about this topic. So that was one of the pieces. This this is kind of a mirror image of what is in the historic chapter that we already approved. That just talks about, you know, we've got a lot of goals. Doing the historic is uh, one of them, but you know, one of our challenges is how do we balance, you know, energy efficiency and weatherization, which is an important part of the energy plan with maintaining historic integrity. It doesn't really answer it. It just says there's a there's a conflict, there's a challenge there to balancing these two. I think it's fine to acknowledge tensions. Uh, I don't think I don't think that it's this is stated in a way where one chapter is contradicting the other. Everybody yeah, I didn't okay. end up. Yeah, that's part of whale. I think it's okay. Okay, let's scroll back up to Aaron's paragraph. Uh, so Aaron, it looks like the initiatives discussed, is that what you wrote? Unless I'm crazy, I think this is new, so I'm gonna read it. Yep. The initiatives no, discussed- it. The initiatives discussed in this chapter seek to create a cleaner and more sustainable energy future for the city. The, the transformation of Montpelier energy infrastructure and use over the next 30 years positions the city to be uh, greater stewards of the natural environment and more resilient in the face of a climate, a changing climate, both locally and globally. These changes, if enacted, will better ensure that <clears throat> uh, Montpelier, the Montpelier residents of tomorrow will enjoy the same quality of life of those today. Um, so that's to replace the paragraph immediately above it, right? Yes. Were you thinking it would replace anything else, Aaron, or just the paragraph above it? No, I just think it would replace the one just above it. That's fine with me. What, what are the people's thoughts? Agreed. Good. Do it. Okay. Stephanie and John, you have like one and a half seconds to uh, object. Yeah, it looks good. All right. To move on. So I'm looking at the summary past efforts uh, section. Uh, the energy plan is a relatively new addition to the city plan. As a supplement, below is a catalog of the key reports that have been developed over the past 12 years in the city. Some key energy planning efforts and plans include, and then this was unfinished, but we moved uh, the items that Barb wanted mentioned down here. Um, this looks like it needs more work. And so if we're going to vote tonight, uh, I mean, could we leave this to you, Mike, to further flesh out and we'll just approve it with the idea that this will be completed later? Yeah, we actually did that with the, the housing or with the uh, historic as well. Um, we kind of recognized that now that we had the format and the pieces put together, we would have to take some time to work with the Historic Preservation Commission to come up with the list of all the projects. And the same thing here is, you know, I'm going to have to go back and work with MEAC to try to find what reports have been published 
there are only like three that I found. So there aren't a lot of, of technical reports, but we can change this to read a catalog of key reports. And, you know, I can just tweak the, the wording there to also. Um, it looks like and projects would be good enough. And, yeah, through that. Yeah. Blows a catalog of the key reports and projects that have been developed over the past 12 yeah. years. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I trust your discretion too to just in include these, these examples from Barb if they make sense to you. We're watching. Okay. Sorry, I just decided I didn't like what I suggested there. <laughs> oh, that was you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just uh, thought I'd get rid of it since. <laughs> that looks good. Looks good to me. Uh, okay, so let's move on unless anybody else has anything to say about the summary of past efforts. Okay. Map. Uh, so these are just the components to the map that will be included here, Mike? Yeah, there are going to be a set of layers. There are certain ones I'm trying to remember. I don't believe there are any required maps for the energy plan. Um, I don't think there are, but I'd also maybe suggest that we just refer to the RPC one, because I don't think there's any like utility to these maps, no pun intended, but like no no one's going to be looking at this to figure out like where there's a power substation or like it's just, it just kind of feels like a map for the sake of a map you know which usually i'm all for but in this case if it seems like maybe we're creating work for ourselves where we could be spending our time on on things that are more useful yeah, considering we we haven't in the, in the energy committee wasn't interested in doing the the there's a there's a, another act that was done for the energy plans which lets you be able to approve locations for energy facilities specifically usually it's for solar facilities um, to basically get them approved faster um, so. If we had those maps or if we adopted those maps, but the energy committee wasn't interested in doing that work. So, you know, if we wanted to do that, we would have had to have those maps, but we didn't go that route. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with John. I don't think there's maps for the sake of maps. Um, it's certainly when I was developing this list, I was just trying to, you know, kind of roll off the top of my head what, what would be some possible map layers, but there. I don't think there was much that's there. I, I could be wrong about this, so take this with a huge grain of salt, but I'm fairly sure that there are some like, very real Department of Homeland Security issues with mapping out utilities. Um, I know that there is for certainly uh, distribution lines, or, I'm sorry, transmission lines, um, but I don't know if the distribution stuff would be problematic either, but. Just another, it's just another reason not to include a map. I don't know if we'd want to wade into those issues if they exist. Okay, but Aaron, what you're, 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 not, you're not advocating against using the, um, the Regional Planning Commission maps, though? No, okay. I mean, they exist, so. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm just saying, I don't know if we want to be developing map layers so, and then publishing them. We should yeah, have a Homeland Security chapter. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have a lot of these and it wouldn't be hard to do, but again, unless there's like a reason why we're including them, I don't know why we spend too much time doing it. I also, I, th I thought this was kind of interesting. There's been a big shift at Homeland Security over the past number of years where they now have a big open data site where they publish all of this stuff. So I put a link in the chat there. So in other words, you're saying I'm wrong, which is 
totally legitimate. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm sure if there are things that that uh, are, are have security concerns that they don't include all of that, but but yeah, it's interesting that that culture has shifted a little bit. They now make that openly available. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds like yeah. Good so plan. when we were talking, when we were talking about the maps before, when we did the historic chapter, what we were talking about was being able to develop a map and kind of inserting it into the conversation above, maybe in the introduction. You know, when we were talking about having photos, the map would be inserted in with the text, so it would be in support of something that is being talked about. Um, so I think getting to John's point, um, if we're not talking about anything that people would intuitively be saying, oh, I wonder where that's located. Let's see it on the map. I mean, if people want to know where the log road solar facility is, you can put a map and show it, but um, I don't know how useful that is. Um, so again, we'll, I think we can revisit the map when we get back in there to kind of see, is, is there a map that would help the, the, the reader to better understand, or could we, you know, tell a better story if we had a map um, or a table that would show something. So, um, and this actually should say probably maps and tables. Um, okay, sounds good. Uh, so, the, so the next part of the chapter is the um, kind of narrative explanation of the aspirations and goals. Uh, has anyone checked to make sure that this reflects what we did last meeting uh, i don't think it i don't think it does does it because we, no. we changed okay. no because we and we still had to talk about the strategies so i i haven't been in here to go through and readjust this which i guess i could do for next meeting unless marcella wants to go through and um i can yeah or so just I can replace remind me though, would we need, so we, we agreed, hold on, I'm opening the template. We agreed on the aspiration and goals, right? And then mm -hmm. did we agree on the strategies too, the collapsed strategies. No, I put that together and that's the, that's the second of our conversations oh, okay. for today. Sorry. So as soon as we're done with the chapter, we'll go to work on the strategies. Okay. I'm happy to, I don't know if that'll delay us, but I can make the aspirations and goals match what we had agreed on and take a stab at the writing. And then the implementation approaches, I guess, we would have to do after the fact. So I guess by the end of tonight, I could work on all of that for next meeting. Would that delay our vote, though? Uh, I think so, um, but that's fine, I guess. As long as we're not just retreading the same ground, um, we can vote later. Uh, as a reminder, did we how we cut it down? Did we cut it down to one aspiration? Yes. And and it, it, we cut it down to the the because I, I, I have it pulled up the spreadsheet pulled up. Mopular will be a net zero city by twenty thirty for municipal operations and twenty fifty community wide. Yes. And then for goals, it was everything in column J. Yeah, there's a new energy um template energy goals and strategies for city plan there's a, a new one that's on the drive as well oh oh there's a new one yep um okay. i figured i would save the old template because it had so much information before i deleted it so i just wrote a new one Okay. Oh, okay. So, so Marcella, did you catch that? If you're going to be like adapting these, that there's like a clean one that has everything you need. 
Mike, let me just say, I, I like how you noted that every single goal related to the single aspiration A. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we made straight A's. What do you know? Uh, okay, so uh, maybe I'm the one that's slow on the uptake there because it looks like all of you are already in that document. So, okay. Uh, we can do that. Uh, So, so Marcel, are you going to write new language? Is that what you were saying? For or just the... sort of go through and add, just make copy edits too. I'll try do to we... take a read through and, and make some notes as well. Do we like the way it's laid out being just a list of aspirations and goals first? Is how are how are these going to look on the website? Are they going to be? They were going to be listed out, right? So would this be a second list? I'm having a hard time remembering what we decided it would end up looking like, or maybe we didn't know yet. So I think the the thought of what was in going to be in the written part of the chapter was to give people kind of that bite-sized piece. And I think this was a little bit long, probably. Um, so people don't necessarily have to go into the implementation strategy where all of the, the cards and everything are. Um, so if you wanted to understand the energy plan, you could get a brief introduction, a little history of what's been done, um, and then kind of an introduction to the aspirations and goals and strategies here. Um, and so it really wasn't meant to talk about every strategy or every goal, but it was really just to try to go and kind of lay them out. And the historic was three paragraphs. And then the implementation was three paragraphs. So it was relatively short. I mean, it's a shorter topic, but... Okay, I think my my only like concern was just to make sure that the the newly stated aspirations and and goals are are the topics being discussed by the language here, uh, which we didn't really cut much, so I imagine it will be. But so so our plan will be to approve the sections other than aspirations and goals and then we will revisit that at the next meeting when we have new text for it is that does that sound good yes okay so the next section here is the outline outline the implementation approaches it says yeah, those are the strategies. So that's that also has to wait. Okay. Uh, so Mike, you said that you were going to work on a draft of the strategies for this, and then we'll look at that later based on the new goals. No, we have that all ready for you in the template that you were just in. So if you go to okay. your Excel. Okay. Okay, so that sounds like we're at a good place to switch over to that then. Let's do that. So if everyone can open the, the template and under the strategies tab. We have 12 strategies. Yeah, so what I what what I did with the the when we did the other one, we started to group them together. So I started rather than calling them strategies, I tried to started to kind of label them as kind of initiatives um because they usually in, involved a number of different related strategies. So um a couple of them, especially if there were projects, tended to kind of fall into their own category. 
Um, so this was, if you remember, like eight pages of strategies. Um, so condensing it down isn't too bad, or at least I thought it wasn't too bad. Um, so the, the, if we go back, we got down to eight goals. So um, the municipal, the first uh, four municipal energy use um, is talking about electricity, 100% renewable electricity for municipal facilities, purchase all equipment, um, must be net zero, and convert heating loads to municipal facilities to 100% renewable energy. And then the other four, are related to the 2050 goals of how we get the community. So in the strategies, um, let's see, we got the first seven are related to the municipal and then the others are back to the community. Um, so we had one for municipal building efficiency initiative so one of, I'll, I guess I'll just read it. So this is uh, one of the key outcomes to achieving the 2030 goal is a reduction in energy used in our existing buildings. These efficiencies will come from following energy audits and the findings of the net zero 2030 implementation plan. Once in place, the actions identified will be implemented through the annual capital improvement plan for large projects in the net zero revolving loan fund for small projects and the capital equipment plan for vehicles and equipment. Some net zero purchases, purchasing policies should be adopted to guide those projects and purchases. This is the first of our four major 2030 initiatives. Um, let's see if I can find my, all right, so, um, and then we had a couple of individual projects that really didn't fit into those. One was a project to meter the fire, fire station for District Heat. Fire station is currently metered with City Hall, and this is a project for tracking weatherization efforts on both buildings. It's been estimated to be five to 7,000, which is why it hasn't been done yet. It seems like a lot of money to spend for not actually doing anything other than um, metering the building but MIAC has identified that. Um, so the second major one, and you guys can stop me if you've got something you wanna change, um, is the Municipal Electrical Generation Initiative. So although Green Mountain Power is projected to be net zero by 2030, the city has a goal to net meter renewable power for all electrical electricity used by municipal facilities. Much of this was done through the net metering solar projects in Sharon and on Log Road. There are also additional generation opportunities in phase two of the water resource recovery facility upgrades currently under development in 2021, which would be sold to the grid. MIAC would also like to study additional generation opportunities if presented. This is the second of the four major 2030 initiatives. Um, the next one, future municipal facilities and future vehicles must be net zero initiative. Although no new municipal facilities are being proposed at this time, this plan recognizes that when new facilities are proposed and constructed, they should be net zero at the time of operation. This net zero policy should be extended to the purchase and replacement, purchase of replacement vehicles as they come up in the equipment plan as well. Similar to the other initiatives, this one will be guided by the 2030 net zero plan and implemented through the capital improvement plan and capital equipment program and supported by policies to guide the construction and purchases. This is the third of the four major initiatives. And then we've got another individual project, um, which is the bio fleet, biodiesel fleet tank project. It is anticipated that a percentage of our net zero goals will be accomplished by shifting to biodiesel for our heavy equipment like front loaders, backhoes, and tandem dump trucks. This shift will require new fuel tanks at the DPW garage to support those vehicles. And then uh, 
electric vehicle charging stations. It's anticipated that a number of vehicles will be replaced with electric vehicles in order to meet our net zero goals. This will affect such items as police cruisers, small utility trucks, and other cars. A number of EV stations will be needed to charge these vehicles when not in use. So whether this is a simple project to install them or a program over time will be determined by the net zero 2030 plan. And then the last of uh, the- hold on, hold on, Mike. I just want to make sure okay. before we keep going. Does, does it, so does anyone have any feedback so far? We just shot through half of them. Um, Seems like some good work. Okay. I mean, there is a lot there for each one of these pieces, but I think it kind of does group them into bite-sized pieces that could be prioritized. Um, and and if we're going to be net zero, you know, each one of these pieces would have to get accomplished. So um, that was my thought in trying to group them together. Um, so the last of the municipal one is the municipal fuel switching initiative, which is uh, some municipal facilities are in district heat and meet our 2030 net zero goals, while other facilities still need to undergo fuel switching. Similar to the other major initiatives, the initiative will be guided by the net zero 2030 plan and implemented through the capital improvement program, expansion of the district heat service, or use of biogas produced as a part of phase one of the water resource recovery facility upgrades underway in 2021. This is the fourth major 2030 initiative. So basically that's the question of how do we get all of our facilities off oil and onto some renewable. And so there are a couple of approaches for doing that. Some of them that are close to the water resource recovery facility can take advantage of the extra methane to heat their plants. Uh, so basically the city garage building and the sewer plant itself can be heated with methane recovery and uh, district heat can cover some facilities and the rest we have to plan for uh, shifting. And then I think these next ones, um, again, this is looking at how we're gonna do for 2050. Um, and this is community wide. So this tends to have completely different strategies. Um, it's easier for us to convert municipal stuff because we don't have to deal with um, the public. We just have to do it ourselves. So the first one is looking at the building efficiency initiative. So this was the one where we grouped all the weatherization and electrical efficiency. So similar to municipal 2030 version of this initiative, the intent of these implementation strategies is to address electrical efficiencies and weatherization in private structures. Unlike the municipal 2030 initiative though, the private, privately owned buildings must be addressed through a combination of assisting, assisting people, landlords and businesses with energy audits, coordinating public outreach about the value of energy efficiency, creating a weatherization fund and adopting ordinances such as energy labeling ordinance and the Vermont building energy stretch codes. These still need to be fully discussed and identified in a future 2050 net zero implementation plan. So for this and the next three more generally, I, well, I, th I support the goal and I think we should keep it and keep a lot of these things. I'd like us to consider uh, not adopting any Montpelier specific ordinances. I think for a number of reasons, one, I don't, I don't think that we necessarily get, there's a whole lot of benefit to it and it comes with a lot of overhead and, and some complication. Um, you know, and it could be that the state adopts an energy code that puts us there anyway, but for us to create one and administer these separate ordinances in Montpelier, when we're trying to you know, every house that gets built in Montpelier ends up with between 30 to 50% fewer vehicle miles traveled than 
homes that are built outside Montpelier, and that blows away any efficiency, residential efficiency standards. But um, but in the last like decade, most of the homes in the county have been all built outside of Montpelier. So if we can just r- focus on making it, on really getting things built and inviting people into Montpelier, and then if we can do that, if we can get net zero homes built without having our own ordinance, then I think that's how we that's how we win, and that's how we get there. But uh, for us to to just adopt these for our own city of seven thousand people, I think would be um, would be a mistake. So I guess all I would propose is scratching any reference to any ordinances or or codes, but everything else looks fine. What do other people have to say about that? I hadn't thought about that, but it, the way John explains it makes sense. I would, if anybody else feels like they have the expertise to talk about that. Mike, what, what was your rationale in, uh, well, I think it was you and me working together, right? So, um, and I'm not asking you to like rebut John, just just what, what was the thought about the need for the ordinance and, and the strategies? Um, so my, certainly my, my concern, if you notice over in column O, I actually have some, com- I've made some comments on these next ones that come up. Um, just because I've, I've felt that the 2050 stuff hasn't been well thought out and hasn't been well debated. And I think, um, I think MEAC would probably disagree with John in that they want to be net zero. And so therefore we should be doing more um, to get there um, if, if we're going to be net zero. Um, my complaint about this was actually, I thought this was very weak implementation strategies. There's no real regulatory changes to drive transition. Um, so, you know, we want to be net zero with respect to these things. And, and mostly it was, if you really look at what they're talking about doing is assisting in energy audits. Um, and public outreach to tell people how important it is to weatherize um, the two ordinances. One is the energy labeling ordinance, um, which, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I will, I will say here in, in the planning context, I, I was not a fan of it. I don't think it's going to be effective. I don't think it's going to have, you know, it's not a direct, it's not having a direct impact. And what I look at when I do things is to be deliberate about having a very direct effect and not go and say, well, other communities that adopted an energy ordinance or a labeling ordinance, what it requires is when you sell your home that you've got to go and reveal what the energy um, efficiency status of the home is in hopes that either the buyer or the seller will, um, want to invest in energy efficiency either upon selling or upon buying that structure. And I feel there's better ways of getting to people. It's it's not helping existing homeowners do weatherization, which is where I would have targeted. Um, so, I mean, I, I'll agree with John. Um, the regulations are probably more important for the new structures that get built to make sure that they are energy efficient, although most of them already are. Um, I would have preferred if I were writing the implementation strategy in this section, I would be working on a program where we've got funds to try to help people do weatherization. I think I would, I would be attacking this issue with programs, not necessarily with the, you know, remember we had the five boxes, um, you got plans and permits and programs and projects. Um, I would not be attacking this with permits as much as I would be attacking this through a program. And I would want to see a good program in the same way that we talk about the accessory dwelling unit program, where we take a pot of funds and we advertise and we find homeowners who are interested in, in putting in an accessory apartment. And then we give them money to help subsidize their doing that. You know, and I think we could do a program for energy efficiency where you could go through and say, Hey, we will, we, we've, um, we're putting $50,000 a year into an energy efficiency fund. We will match every dollar that Efficiency Vermont gives you, we will match it locally with another dollar. 
And that way it'll help to defer the cost of people doing weatherization. And I think that would be a, a strong way of helping people achieve this building efficiency initiative. It's not what they chose to do. Um, so that was, I agree with John. Um, I didn't want to get in here again. This is what MIAC was looking at, at doing. Um, so they kind of kicked the can a little bit down the road to say, we need to do a 2050. Right now, they, the city is doing the 2030 net zero implementation plan. So they're looking at the municipal government and they're developing a plan. They have a consultant, they're working on it. This would be something to be done down the road. I don't know if that really helps, but maybe that gives a little more information. Do we have any interest in uh, changing it then away from a regulatory inclusion to a program that would require some funding? Do we have ideas for that? I it's guess already, I did put it. It's already, it's already in there, creating like a weatherization funding program. Yeah, I think I put that in there. So it, it is it is in there. I think that's the key. That's the biggest key to getting there is that that program will get you there rather than these two ordinances. But um, because we do already have a building inspector, we could in, we could enforce to a higher building code if we wanted to, because we already had the building inspector to do that. Um, the energy labeling ordinance, we it's already adopted. So it really is, it's, although it says adopting ordinances such as energy labeling, that energy labeling ordinance was adopted a couple of weeks ago. So that would have to get amended. Tell us, tell us more about the ordinance, like what, what process led to, to that being approved? It's a long story. I know it's been um, something the mayor has really worked hard at for a number of years through the Energy Committee and um, recently kind of led it through the adoption process. Um, so I think it was adopted probably a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, maybe, maybe four. So it okay. really just looks at, as we said, it's, it's energy labeling. So when you sell your house, you have to go through and there are a bunch of requirements that you have to go through and do this energy. Um, it's a, it's a tabletop energy audit of your house. So you would go through and enter some, some information about your house and it would come up with an energy profile. And that you're required to provide that at closing and there has to be a signed thing and it's got to get recorded in the land records and that's the basics of it. I, I did not know that personally. Um, yeah, according, according to some statistics of other towns, up, upwards of 30% of homeowners will invest in some kind of energy improvements that otherwise wouldn't be done according to the research because they have to disclose it to the seller and then so they're going to want to look more competitive yeah so either the buyer wants to be more competitive which doesn't really matter in our our environment um or the buyer might want the information and use it to make energy improvements to the house that they've just purchased Okay, so uh, and that changes some thinking for me because it seems like the ship may have sailed. I mean, we can we still don't have to include it in the plan just because it's something already in existence, but it doesn't seem like it's going to hurt anything possibly to include it since it already exists. Well, what what do other people think? But then there's the question of the stretch codes, which that would be a, if we have that in the plan, that would be something that we're saying we're aspiring to change the building code. That's not something that's taken place, right, Mike? No, it has not taken place. Um, so I think well, in this one, and then in, if you look in like number nine, where it says, sticks such as the adoption of ordinances to require net zero standards and and then after that um 
develop an ordinance or codes to require buildings being built after a certain date to be net zero. So my proposal would just be to remove any any reference to adopting any uh, new building codes or building ordinances. What do other people think? <clears throat> Stephanie, what do you think? I, I agree with that sentiment. I think the John makes a really good point that it's we we kind of get lost in our own little city sometimes and forget that we we live within a county and within a larger area. And the impact of someone buying five acres in Cabot and building a house is going to be a lot greater than house built in Montpelier. That's not perfectly net zero. So I I'm on board with that. Uh, do we have any other thoughts about, I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting tension because I mean, if we, if we have this goal, then certain things have to happen. And if we're not requiring them to happen, then it makes that energy goal difficult. Certainly makes it more difficult, but it'd be easy to meet if we had no new homes built and they would all be <laughs> built to that standard. So. I still think it's a it's a noble goal. It's not easy, and this doesn't make it easier. But I do think that um, the more homes that we can get built, the more we're really working towards the spirit of this. And I think that we're we are especially with new homes being built to the current residential building energy standard, which I'm sure will only be increased across the state. We're really talking about the margins. So the, the impact there, I think is again, not, not very big. And I think that we, we tend to discount or overlook the cost of customizing and administering and building our own ordinance for the city. And what that means, not only for the city administering it, but for anyone trying to build in Montpelier to understand that they have to play by a series of, of different rules. So no, this isn't to counter anything you're saying, but my understanding is that Montpelier's building code is non-standard already. Is that true? Like like a, anyone building anything in Montpelier as of right now would still have to learn some special. No, our, our so commercial, we enforce the state rules. So the only difference that we have compared to other communities in the state is that we enforce the building codes on single family and two family houses as well. So but the state ones. Okay. Yep. We're just enforcing this the the state codes. Okay. And uh Mike, what municipalities in Vermont have a different building code with its like like Burlington, I think? Does it have its own building code? Uh, well, there are eight, I think there are eight communities that have taken over the um, enforcement of building codes. So, you know, the everybody else, you've got to go to the state if you're a commercial or industrial building, you'd have to go to the state for a permit. And here in Montpelier, in Williston, and a couple other places, Burlington, you'd go get a local permit. Not all of them enforce residential codes, um, but we enforce the residential code. Um, now, what sometimes people confuse is there's also a rental code. Um, we don't enforce the rental code where Barry City does enforce um, minimum housing standards. So that's there's sometimes people will confuse that um, the minimum housing with the building codes. So in, and, life safety. and so in strategy eight here, where it references adopting ordinances such as dot, 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 the Vermont building energy stretch codes. I read that to mean that 
Montpelier would have a, you know, different building code than other municipalities. Does that mean something else? Yes, in this case, this would mean something else. This would be layered on top of, so we are not currently enforcing energy codes um, beyond what's in the, the building and life safety codes. So our building inspector is not enforcing any of the, any of those um, various uh, energy codes, but we could, and we could adopt the stretch code, which is a higher standard and enforce that um, as a requirement above and beyond. Are there other municipalities doing that? I don't, I'm, I don't know that it's possible there might be, but I don't know of any. Okay. So I think, I mean, I think that's some important context there. So that we, that goes to John's point, I think that uh, we're, we would be making it uniquely more difficult for, to, to build in Montpelier. What, what do other people think? I guess I feel like um, I agree. I wouldn't, it, it's, yeah, it would be too easy. I think Stephanie's Cabot example is a good idea. It would be too easy to just live outside the city, which wouldn't get us what we want. Okay. Uh, but I do feel a little out of my, I do feel a little bit in deep, deep water in terms of my understanding. I'm, I'm with you. I'm catching up on building code related background info. Uh, if we, if we want to remove this, uh, is there a sentiment that we should at least inform MIAC about it to see if they want to provide us some further feedback. I definitely don't want to see a situation in which we're, you know, battling it out with MIAC in front of the city council later. Discussion. The discussion okay. about not like the, doing Well, the, the discussion about the, um, the adopting the codes and, you know, the, I think some of the, the, arguments for it are, you know, they can, you can try to show that over a long period of time, some of these things may come back and um, have value over time. And again, it gets, it gets, my point is not that we shouldn't, like, I support the goal of us trying to get build net zero buildings. It's the, um, it's just the creating the bureaucracy around it that's just not not helpful and I, and i don't i think it's like not only for this personally i feel like for this plan and what we should be commuting communicating as a city is that we are welcoming people here and we are going to work together to build uh homes for you know for new households to come to to the city and that's really what we should be um emphasizing and we are going to be a net zero community and we are going to have all these other amazing things. But I think like we very easily water down the, you know, yes, we want X many more houses in Montpelier over the next 10 years, but we're also going to have, you know, the highest um, energy standards, historic preservation standards, um, a lot of these other things that then all of a sudden it just becomes pretty exclusionary in terms of, you know, who could potentially build a home here. And I think you could, we could still accomplish these things, especially with a lot of federal dollars um, coming and we could help people leverage that to build those things. But, but we don't need to, again, create a lot of red tape for us to, to be able to do that. Okay. So is, is anyone opposed to us uh, removing, uh, and then, and and I'll ask John in a second. But 
uh, to specify which which areas he's talking about. But in general, is anyone opposed to removing some of the regulatory ordinance requirements in here? And, and then we'll let me act now. We'll ask Mike to, and then we'll and ask Mike to forward that along. Is anybody opposed to that generally? I'm not. Okay, Stephanie already said she wasn't, uh, and and I'm not. So uh, okay, let so so John, will you point out the specific parts we should delete here? So I think I got the first one. So I, I think I took care of number eight, okay, and you just struck that for nine, that's fine. I think 10 may have to just go all together. Can we can we figure out a way to rephrase that uh, as an incentive instead of removing it? It's the it's, for one thing. It's the only strategy that's under goal seven. So that one is looking specifically at new residential and commercial buildings. So I think this goes back to the question of um, and, and I think the best analogy I can I can I can give is or best saying would be you know don't let the you know the perfect be the enemy of the good um, I think sometimes you know in, in striving to be net zero um, we actually end up you know blocking being good so you know do, do we want to be a community of 10,000 people who is 90% net zero, or do we want to be a community of 7,000 people that is net zero? And which one is better? Um, and they're looking at in number 10 is the fact that all new buildings, if we're going to be net zero by 2050, then we've got to start making new buildings meet our net zero requirements. And that was why they wanted to get an ordinance um, in to start moving in that direction. Although I think they were talking about developing an ordinance and phasing it in, but I think that doesn't change John's concern of, of administrative overhead and other red tape. And again, maybe the state ends up getting there at some point or, you know, they can leverage some kind of funding to push new development to incentivize it to reach those higher standards but getting using the the, the carrot or not not having a montpelier specific stick i guess is what i'd like us to avoid yeah i mean i will say that the energy committee did have a number of initiatives that kind of which we already had cut out of here, which talked about, you know, well, we need to get higher efficient, uh, you know, fuel efficiency standards in our vehicles. So we should, you know, be doing things to make more efficient vehicles. And I think there are a number of times there are just things that are not within our ability to do. Um, and maybe in this case, this is something we do have the ability to do, but the question is whether it's advisable to do. Um, you know, maybe well, sometimes we do need to wait for the state to do their job, and maybe sometimes we do need to wait, you know, and I think MIAC is probably looking at it that, no, we should be leading the way um, and not waiting for the state. We should be leading the state to, to doing these things. This, this plan's only going to take us to 2030. I think that's like a, you know, something to, to keep in mind here. So with this, this goes to the 2050 goal, which is ambitious. But, you know, th this plan's not bringing us to 2050. Um, 
I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm just thinking of like, if we could have, I'm in favor of, of having that goal in the city plan. And I'm in favor of having, obviously we need a strategy to go with it. But one that can be more like a carrot or at least neutral that uh, kind of brings us to 2030 and sets us up for the 2050 goal. Well, one carrot I could put in um, could be just, you know, to talk about in here, um, we could tie our tax stabilization policy and most commercial and industrial buildings that come, unless they're in the TIF district where they're not eligible for tax stabilization, a majority of the projects that come in uh, that are commercial and industrial go to this uh, city council for tax stabilization. And that could probably be a, a very good, you know, just incentive to go through and say, you know, to, to peg your amount of tax stabilization you are entitled to, to the degree to which you achieve the net zero, you know, um, whether it's by percentage or by number of years. So I could certainly could we add this to eight. number eight. Basically, just add reference to new buildings in number eight. Yeah. in new and existing private structures. So I added new and existing. Unlike the initiatives of privately owned businesses, unless you guys are not actually making them by dotting each other, it's connecting. How about, how about when we go back to inform MIAC of what we're considering, we could ask for an, if, if they would be willing to come up with an incentive-based strategy. And I think that's a collaborative approach that maybe could in the long run avoid tension over this. What does the Planning Commission think of that? Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's that's sort of what this does in my mind. Um, but yeah, I think also communicating like we are supporting all of the goals and a lot of these very ambitious strategies. So hopefully this isn't seen as um, as as too much of a break or departure. And that we just have a lot of other goals and considerations. Um, um, but to go along with all of these things, I think is is very supportive of what they've they've put forward. And it's not, you know, this has been going on for about a decade, so it's not out of the blue. Okay, so is that okay, Mike? Can you can you let them know like right away and to ask for hopefully a turnaround within a month? or at least a response. Yeah, well, I, I think what I'll do is wait. I mean, we've got this one, and then we were going to touch up the rest of the energy plan chapter, those last two sections. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll wait till we have that so they can kind of get to see the whole of what we've put together. If we want to wait um, just a couple more weeks, we can send them the whole thing. Okay. Uh, if you're okay um, with that. Yeah, yeah. My, my only concern is when we when we when we table things for a while, and then when we go back to them, we're not fresh anymore, and then uh, you know time gets wasted a little bit. Uh, but that seems fine. We just need to note that as far as the chapter goes, we're just it's just the aspirations and goals and strategies sections of the chapter that we haven't reviewed, uh, and uh, for the strategies themselves here the it's strategy number 10 that we're still considering. 
Um, we're out of time, so uh, did we? Uh, so, so we obviously didn't finish the the strategies yet. So, uh, yeah, like, can, uh, but Mike, you're saying that you want us to finish this next meeting, and then you'll go to MEAC. Yeah, I think it would be better for us to have something, um, you know, and I think you should feel comfortable. Every All of the various committees that worked on their chapters worked within a silo and worked within a, a um, you know, an, an individual set of goals. Um, you guys uh, are Jess, the first. I've got to run, but see yeah. you guys. All right. Here. You guys were the first ones to kind of take a look at, at, how things may compete with each other. So um, it's perfectly fine for you guys to be going in and saying, hey, in order for us to continue to advance what we want for, for housing, we need to adjust and roll back a little bit on the energy plan. And then that's gonna go to public comment, that's gonna go to comment from the MEAC, and that's gonna eventually go to city council. And city council can make their changes and they may put put the weight back in and think that we can have our, our cake and eat it too. Um, and I think that's, it's just, you guys have the tough job of making that first cut to go through and say, you know what, I think this is too much. And I don't think we can, I don't think we can be both net zero by 2050 and accomplish our housing goals at the same time. Um, we should be more energy efficient and as energy efficient as we can, but Right now, our priority is building housing. Um, and if that housing is not net zero, that's okay. We want it to be energy efficient, but it doesn't have to be net zero. And I think that's just a statement and the public will have to respond to that and the city council and MEAC will have to respond to that. Okay, well, let's 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 go with, I mean, I, I, I would still like to involve MEAC before it gets to city council. I'd like to oh. uh, avoid. Agreed. Um, you know, I don't want any surprises and I don't want any battles that, that are easily avoided. So um, so let's go with that plan. We'll pick this up ne at the next meeting, both of these things. Um, yeah. We're going to have but some language. Yeah, I, don't think 11, I don't think 11 and 12, for anyone who was looking at those, it was that big a deal. Those are the two housing ones. They were just grouped into reducing vehicle miles traveled and fuel switching, basically. How do we get electric cars? So people okay. can review those for next time. Yeah, uh, so with that, uh, we know what we need to pick up next time. Uh, we'll pick up the, uh, the natural resources uh, changes potentially next time. Um, and uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Uh, so we have- Second. A, we have a motion from Stephanie, was it? And second from Aaron? Okay, those in favor of a journey, say aye. 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 Uh, aye. Okay, see you in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Too. Good night.